gather up your t-shirts because we're going to make a quick and easy t-shirt quilt. You can use up to 24 t-shirts, so the front side of 24 t-shirts, or if you have fewer, you can use the front side with the design and use a plain back side on your quilt, whatever you desire. We're going to use uh, 24 t-shirts today. So to start out, we're going to press our design. Your kits will come with a pressing cloth. This is a see-through pressing cloth, and you want to press your t-shirts nice and flat. And what this cloth does, it, it actually protects the design so that the iron doesn't burn it. We'll also use this cloth later when we put the interfacing on. Now we're gonna take our t-shirt block template and put it over the top of our design on our t-shirt. I have this neckline to deal with up here, so I'm gonna put it about as high up as I think I can go. And then I wanna center the X in my design. So I can follow along this line right here and I can get my t-shirt block centered fairly well like this. I'm gonna use 14 and a half inch blocks on the quilt today. So I will make a mark all the way around the edge to show the block I want to cut. But I want you to see these other guides in here. If you want to do a smaller block, you can cut at 11 and a half inch and you would simply mark here and here, again down the side and here and here, and then connect those, connect those lines and cut it out. But I'm gonna do the big size, so I'm gonna mark all the way around the edge like this, and then we simply need to cut that out. So when I lift this up, you're gonna be able to see that I've got my block outlined. Here's an example of a t-shirt where we made the block with quilting cottons on all four sides. And for this one, we used one of the smaller template sizes and we added enough fabric on here until the block reached 14 and a half inches. It's really a pretty look to do that. Here's another example of something very similar uh, where we've added fabric all around the edges. And here's yet another idea where we use the ruler to cut the block a little bit more vertical and then we added fabric to make it a 14 and a half inch block. If you have a rotary cutter and ruler and cutting mat, you simply wanna put the ruler on the line that you just drew, and we're just gonna make a cut like this. If you have a scissors that's easy to use, you can simply take your scissors and cut your t-shirt block. So our next step now is to stabilize the blocks. So what we're gonna do is turn the block over like this so the back side is facing up and we're working on a pressing surface like you see here. And we're gonna grab the pre-cut woven fusible interfacing and I have a piece of that right here. The bumpy side or the glue side is what faces the back of the t-shirt block. And you're just going to line that up like this. If you're using all smaller sizes of t-shirt blocks, you can cut that interfacing down. And then you're gonna grab that press cloth again that we used initially. You're going to lay that over the top and spritz it with a little bit of water just to get it damp. And then we're going to press on this using about a wool setting and around 10 seconds in each area. And what that's going to do is it's gonna adhere that fusible interfacing to the back of the t-shirt. So it will stabilize the block left to right, it will stabilize the block up and down. So again, about 10 seconds in every area. A good tip is that the press cloth is dry. That's how you know when you are likely done. So let me take the press cloth away and you can see that our interfacing is now stuck to our t-shirt block. So we have one unit and it's nice and stable both directions. So we're going to make 24 of these with the stabilizer on the back. All our blocks are now stabilized as you can see. So what we're going to do is take the 12 pre-cut batting pieces and we're going to sandwich this batting between each front and back square of our t-shirt quilt. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is secure those three layers, and that's where the quilting comes in. You can stitch any fancy lines along here if you like, 
Or what we might suggest is that you simply stitch either vertical lines or horizontal lines because it really looks nice and it's easy to do and it doesn't really interrupt the design. You can use any size painter's tape or masking tape. It works really well to just tear off a piece of the tape like this and just put it right on the edge of your block, stitch along there, and then pull it up, line it back up with the stitching line, and continue on. Our blocks are all quilted, vertical on this one, horizontal on this one, so we're all set to start joining them. So I'm going to put this block next to this block in my layout and take my sash and a dash, and you're gonna cut off a 16 inch piece of this. I've got that done here. And what we're gonna simply do is open the sash in a dash like this, and we're gonna nest that quilt block right in here. So center it top to bottom in our sash in a dash, and then nest it right in here. We're gonna be sewing on this outer line, so let's pin this in place. Now let's go to the sewing machine. Now we're gonna stitch right along this edge, very, very close to our quilt block. and we've got one quilt block attached. You can see our stitching close to the edge here, all the way down, and let's turn it over and look at the back side. You can see our stitching is also very close to the edge right here. Now we're gonna flip it over back to the front and we're gonna attach our second block. So now we're gonna open up the left side of Sash and a Dash, nest that block in there, and here's where you wanna try to line up the bottom of uh, the quilt block we just sewed with this one so that they're about at the same level. And we're gonna pin this in place and sew right along this edge. Let's go to the machine. As you start joining your blocks, you're gonna have some excess to the side. So just roll it up like that so it fits right underneath your sewing machine here. And then I'm gonna line up my needle on the edge of the sash in a dash and we're gonna go ahead and sew this side. Our two blocks are joined, and you can see I trimmed off the excess sash and a dash from the top and bottom. Now I'm gonna attach my next block, so I'll have a row of three, so that is gonna be this green block here. And you're gonna notice that my sewing isn't perfect here, it's also not perfect up here, but that's okay because as you know, it's gonna be nested right inside that sash and a dash. So if you're a beginner, it's still gonna look perfect. So don't worry about your sewing. The other tip I wanted to remind you about again is that part of sash and dash is wider on one side. So let's always put that wider side on the bottom and the little narrower side on the top. So I'm going to nest my block in sash and a dash like this. And again, we're going to sew all along the edge, and then I'll nest the other side in sash and a dash. The next thing we're going to do is join rows. So I'm gonna take my second row and bring it down here like this, and you're going to take your sash and a dash, and you're going to cut a 48 inch piece. And you wanna, again, make sure that the narrower sash and dash goes on the top and the wider goes on the bottom. We're gonna do the same thing, joining row to row, as we did block to block and line everything up. So for example, on this particular one, you just wanna make sure that your blocks line up and that the vertical is also lined up. And then we'll sew all the way across this row and then we'll sew all the way across here on the outer edge. Last step is the binding and your kit will come with six yards of pre-made binding. And I would definitely clip or pin this now what you're going to do is you are going to take your binding and you're going to fold it under. You're going to fold the, the whole binding piece under like this, okay? And what you're going to do is take your finger and you're going to make finger press that angle in there. And then what you're going to do is open it up and keeping that same pivot point here, you are going to bring this angle that you finger pressed in right down to the edge of the binding and that forms that beautiful miter right here 
it kind of forms an arrow right here as well. Okay, so I'm going to pin that in place. If you're using clips, that's fine too. I might put a couple pins in here, but I wanted you to be able to see the miter. Now I'm going to turn it over to the back side, and then you can just see how nicely that folds over on the back side. And it creates that miter here as well, that angled miter. Now look at it covers up all my little problem areas in here too. Now what you're going to want to do is take that pin out and now that you've got your miter formed, you're going to pin through all layers and as we start to sew this then, we know this is where we're going to pivot. And then I would continue on to do the rest of the side like this, pinning my binding in place. Now we're ready to sew our binding on and you can use a straight stitch or zigzag. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch today because that gives a little stretch to that and that's nice when you have a t-shirt quilt to have that little stretchier finish. We're on the home stretch with our binding. So we're just going to sew a little bit more. I want to stop about four inches away from this beginning point. So let me just continue on until I get um, in, kind of in the middle of our sashing here. Okay. Now what we're going to do is find the beginning point and cut about three and a half inches of binding extra like this. So we'll just snip that off. And then we're gonna open this up and we're gonna fold this raw edge under like this and you can press that or just finger press it. Fold it over. So now we've got a finished edge here. And what we're going to do is layer that finished edge right over the top of our binding and we're just going to encase that all right in. Okay, I'm making sure that this folded edge stays under and that I'm right on top of the binding.